Jesus have showed up. They were able to be consoled because they were honest with their innermost feeling. Worship service will begin in person and be virtual at, at 11 a.m. with our one dish pastors, Pastor Trevin Lucy Hurst. Remember our those on our prayer list. And this week, September the 11th, let's remember the families of those who lost their lives during 9 11. Today is a very special day, and we like to say happy Grandparents Day to the. <laughs> But from everlasting to everlasting, the Lord's love is with those who fear him and his righteousness with their children's children, according to Psalm 103 and 17. Pastor Hurst and family, we thank you for the love and support shared with our family over the years. We do appreciate the many acts of kindness and most of all your prayers. Love, the family of Deacon Ben Davis, Jr. We will now have our reminders by Deacon Black following him with his sister Daphne Dudley with the uh, Church of Peels for the anniversary. Morning, everyone. Uh, a reminder for this coming up week on Monday, September 9th at 6 p.m., the Women in Prayer weekly prayer session. On Wednesday, September 11th, noonday prayer at 12, and 7 o'clock Bible study on Zoom. Thursday, the male core practice at 6 o'clock. On Saturday morning, at September 14th at a.m., prayer and me meditation. On Sunday at 10 o'clock, on September 15th, we will have our Sunday school on 11 a.m. Morning worship and, and, and prayer. Remember to keep the least the LMS member prayer list and Pastor Harris and his family in prayer and all the sick and shed in everywhere. And remember to pray for those who lost their lives on uh, September the 11th. Thank you. Sister Daphne. Thank you. 
more than welcome to do so. But I just wanted to clear that up that it was not a risk of a homecoming for me. So what, what is a risk of a homecoming for me is that you participate in the inner, any of our fundraisers, which is, of course, everybody knows the goal is for us. We have our birthday rally. We also have our car rally and then our food rally. birthday rally thing, but they didn't put their name on it. So if you remember that you did it not last Sunday, but Sunday before last, I have the envelope still. I just want to make sure I give you credit for it. Thank you. Come, let us bow down in worship. Let us kneel before the Lord, our maker, for he is our God. We are the people of his pasture, the flock under his care. Today, we, if only you would hear his voice. At this time, we'll have our opening selection by our combined choir. Yeah. 
about you, but I can say for myself, I will bless the Lord at all times. Our scripture this morning is coming from Matthew, the fifth chapter, verses 14 through 16. I'll be reading from the NIV version. You are the light of the world. A town built on a hill cannot be hidden. Neither do people light a lamp and put it under a bowl. Instead, they put it on its stand, and it gives light to everyone in the house. In the same way, let your light shine before others, that they may see your good deeds and glorify your Father in heaven. Let us pray. Here we are again, Lord, standing in the need of prayer. Our Father, which art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Heavenly Father, we come to you with humble hearts, knowing, Lord, you are holy and that you are the rock of our salvation. We have come today to give you praise, honor, and glory. I pray, O oh Lord, that those gathered here today can say, I trust you and that you are my shepherd and soon coming king, that you are my salvation that you are all loving and all caring. Almighty Father, we enter your presence confessing the things we try to conceal from you and, and the things we try to conceal from others. We confess the heartbreak, the worry, and sorrow we have caused that make it difficult for others to forgive us. The times we made it easy for others to do wrong. The harm that we have done that makes it hard for us to forgive ourselves. Oh, gracious heaven, Father, we come now asking that you touch those who are joining us by live stream or by some type of social media. We bless those who have come here just in person today. It's all not robbery to be here. Lord, now we come saying, bless the man that's going to bring the word on today. Bless our ushers, bless the choirs they sing for your glory. Bless Reverend Hurst. Continue to keep your ever loving arms and grace and mercy wrapped around him. Now, Lord, we come saying, Help us do things that are pleasing in our sight so that our word, action, and deed may be uplifting to somebody, but yet you may get all the glory. In Jesus' name. God the Father, Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only begotten Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Ghost, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, dead, and buried. He descended into hell. The third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sits at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he shall come in judgment, the quick and the dead. I believe in the Holy Ghost. I believe in the universal church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and life everlasting. Amen. You may be seated. At this time, we will turn over our media ministry for our welcome. 
Hey. And if there's anyone here for the first time, if you just simply raise your hand. Amen. Hey there. Is today your first time here? Or maybe your first time in a while? If so, maybe you're wondering exactly who we are and what this church is all about. Well, we'd like you to know that we're a group of ordinary people who are on an amazing journey together following Christ. Our guide is the Bible because it's the divinely inspired Word of God and it will never take us in the wrong direction. Along the way, we hope you'll see that we are welcoming and spiritually passionate and that getting to know you is a big deal to us. We know that the road is rough sometimes, but we'll work really hard to bring you practical and relevant messages to equip and encourage you through life's ups and downs. We want you to know that we care about this community and we believe that it's our job to make it a better place. So no matter who you are or where you've been, we're glad you're here with us today. And we hope that you'll join us on our journey, following Christ and living out His plan for us. So welcome to church. Amen. We truly welcome all, all here. Even if you, this is your second or third time, we truly welcome you here on behalf of Leaf Springs Missionary Baptist Church in Gravity Springs, Virginia. At this time, we'll be led in an offer of response. Before our operatory is here, I want to, I'm so glad to see uh, Byron and her family and uh, Felicia, who is my assistant at work, would y'all please stand, my buddy KJ, you all please stand, amen, God bless you all, so glad to have you all in the worship with us, and God blessings be upon you, thank you so much for coming. I want to say, uh, before we do our operatory appeal, that remember Tithing is equal sacrifice, not equal giving. You know, if I make sixty thousand dollars a year, I pay six thousand dollars. You pay make thirty, you pay three thousand. But the giving, the, the giving is not equal, but the sacrifice is equal. equal. Amen. It's the same sacrifice. Amen. Same sacrifice. So that's why we. That's why we tie. And then also to remember that we are the stewards and God is the owner. And remember now, the owner is the one who sits the rule. You can't be a steward and sit the rule. Amen. Come on, church. He's the owner of everything. So we give according to him and, and not at, because we are nothing but stewards. So we have to give unto him. And that was right below me. And that's 10%. And I longed to see the day that when I get up and do all the appeal, that you will be happy, you will praise the Lord, you break out in a victory run, a, a victory shout, amen, amen. Because if you could see yourself when I do the operatory appeal, you, if, you, if you won't in the Lord, you probably run up out of here. Lord have mercy. We talk about when we talk about giving. The Lord has been so good to us. Uh, he has been. And we cannot give the Lord enough because he blessed us. All of our blessings uh, come, from, come from the Lord. Uh, may we all stand and you'll see the monitors as we do this presentation. It's tithing and giving time. Praise the Lord. The Lord loves to whom does the tithe belong? Why should we tithe? Should we tithe our gross or our net? How much should we God's promise to the tither. Oh, 
all together. Let us pray. Oh God Almighty, we thank you for being Jehovah Jireh. You are the great provider. And everything that we have, it cometh from you. And we're so thankful now, and I pray that you bless the gifts as well as the givers. And I pray, God, in Jesus' name, that it be used for the building of your kingdom. We ask it now in the glorious name of Jesus, our blessed Redeemer, and our soon coming King. In Jesus' name. And the redeemed said, Amen. 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 If you will stand and face my right.
that the, when he went into the temple when Uzziah died, he said, I also saw the Lord who was high and lifted up and his train filled the temple and the seraphim and the temple response started singing, holy, holy, holy is the Lord of hosts. The whole earth is full of his glory. You know, and what's so amazing about that particular text, Isaiah 6, is the Bible says that the post of the door move that was embraced with gold. Now, if, if, a, if an innate object can move, then why come you can't move? Come on, church, amen. Let's say, let's say that the door, the, the, post, the post of the door, it moved. And, and when he heard them saying, holy, 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 amen. So we thank God is, he is, he is holy. And that's something that the church has gotten away from. You don't never hardly hear anything about holy living, sanctified, and living apart from the world. That's what we're supposed to do. We're supposed to live holy. Amen. We're so blessed to have with us uh, today a good friend of mine. Uh, some years ago, when I had my, uh, my first stroke uh, on the cerebellum, and uh, I was somewhat sort of in and out, but I was awakened uh, by the voice of this person praying for me. Pastor uh, Willie Glenn. Amen. He's a native of Trenton, New Jersey. He's married to um, Anita Glenn. They have one son, Quentin. And he's currently the pastor of the Zion Level Michigan Baptist Church in Roxboro, North Carolina. Um, and one thing I do love about him, he's a type of pastor who, who have other pastors in, in terms of staying accountable about what our calling and our role as pastors and ministry. So we're so thankful to have him to come and share with us this morning. We ask that you pray with him as the Lord should lead and guide him. Amen. The choir will give us the next selection. Another selection. The next voice you hear will be that of Pastor Willie uh, Glenn, the pastor of the Zion Level Mystery Baptist Church. Roxborough, North Carolina.
going to make it. When I think of the goodness of Jesus and all he has done for us, my soul cries out, hallelujah. I say hallelujah. My, my, my. This morning, you know how you're coming down to 11. There come a car on the same side going north, and I'm trying to come south. And I said, Lord, I got to make it. 
So we do give honor to our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, to Pastor Hurst, my friend and my brother, for 30 plus years. We thank God for him and to the other minister of the gospel. And to all my brothers and sisters here at Leap Spring Missionary Baptist Church, my second church, I know I bring you greetings from the Zion Level Missionary Baptist Church in Roxburgh, but also y'all my second church because when I finish my service on Sunday, I try to click on to see what's going on down at Leap Spring Missionary Baptist Church. Thought about also as I traveled down here, I came down here during COVID. God is still in the blessing business. I say God is still in the blessing business. I'm a little tired, but I'm ready to preach. And I want to call your attention to the book of Genesis, the first book of the Bible. I want to call your attention around chapter 12. In verses 1 through 3. Genesis, the 12th chapter, verses 1, 2, and 3. Now the Lord had said unto Abram, Get thee out of thy country, and they from thy kindred, and from thy father's house, unto a land that which I would sue thee, and I would make of thee a great nation and I will bless thee and make thy name great and they shall be a blessing and I will bless them that bless thee and curse him that curse thee and in that thee shall all families of the earth be blessed you may be seated I want to talk about one word blessings Blessings. Thank you, ushers. Thank you, choir, musicians. The word bless means the act or words of a person who has been blessed. We all have received some kind of blessing from God. It don't have to be a large blessing. It can be a small blessing. It can be a special favor or mercy or benefits. We all receive some benefits from the Lord. Can I part for a moment? He woke us up this morning. He started us on our way. We was closed in our right minds. That's a blessing. Blessings of liberty. And this idea of blessing changes lives. I know I've been blessed. For the last time I came to Hope County, I had just came out of a seven-week hospital of visitation of myself. I'm blessed. And I believe it's somebody here this morning has been receiving blessings from God over and over again. You see, God has carved out things of our past. But we still bring up the past from time to time. Let the past stay in the past and look towards the future, what God has for us. This is a greater occasion to let you know that the farther that you push forward, the more God can use you. The greater thing as we deal in this 12th chapter of Genesis, 
we want to examine a person by the name of Abram. Had experienced many different trials and tribulations. And you need to know today, Leech Springs, that God is going to send you a miracle. Going to send you a greater blessing that have your name on it. And I live long enough to realize what God has for you is for you. God wants us not only to be convenient, but God wants to bless us. He wants to give us favor and increase our territory. We got to do more than just be in the four walls of the building. We got to go out into the highways and byways and tell what the Lord has done for us. I come out and let you know the more God blesses me, I want to bless somebody else. He wants to do things that have never been seen before. He wants to do unseen things that takes place in our lives. We always want to bring up what we used to be. But God has picked us up and turned us around. God got a future for Lee Spring greater than you can ever think or imagine. God got a leader here who has a vision to move forward if the people get behind them. Oh, I feel like preaching this morning. And I come to discover the more you take care of the leader, the more the Lord is able to bless you. Do anybody ever feel that you've been blessed over and over again? Have you ever experienced a moment in your life when there was nobody else around, but there was somebody who sits high and look low, and his name is God. I come out and let you know that God makes a difference when he blesses us. In our giving, don't be stingy, because I come to discover if I got my last dollar and I give to the Lord, the Lord will open up another door. And sometimes it don't come back monetarily, but sometimes it come back with a better health and a better medical report, what God had done for us. Has anybody else been blessed? By the power of God. God got miracles, and he's working miracles in somebody's life right now. I don't know who I'm preaching to. But I just want to tell you that your miracle is on the way. You ought to get ready for what God has for you. Because God can do the exceedable and abundantly thing if we just ask in his name. And I'm so glad that Abram had to come to the resolution that he had to know that God had his name and he was going to work a miracle in his life. Don't get worried. Don't need for you to stay up at night. You need to go to sleep at night. I want to lift up because David said he neither sleeps nor slumber. And I'm so glad I know where my help comes from. My help comes from the Lord that made heaven and earth. The miracles and blessings on the way to Lee Spring to let you know that you got to wait on him. And sometimes we get too impatient not to wait on the Lord. Can I preach the way I feel it? To let you know you got to wait on him. That he will blow your mind with some stuff he's already working out. If you got a problem on your job, he can work it out. If you got a problem in the church, he can work it out. If you got a problem in your marriage, he can work it out. He can work it out when them hard head kids get on your nerves. He can work it out because he is in the blessing business. He can work it out. 
If you want God to show you something, you got to have a relationship with him. Help me, somebody. You got to show that he's, he's taking you and separating you from people who don't do you no good. I come to discover Pastor Hurst, some friends who I thought was my friends, I had to say something, bye-bye, because God got some other folk over here who's going to support me, who's going to love you, who's going to trust you. You got to get rid of them negative folk out your life and let God lift up some a new generation. You see, the devil is always working on you. Do I have a witness? People who sell it, who, who sell it, but just want to have supability. And they think they got all and know all and don't know nothing. Don't know nothing. But you can't tell them nothing. I come to discover if I be quiet and let God work it out, God will move them out your way. You see, to get what God has for you, you got to have a relationship with him. Not just on 11 o'clock on Sunday morning. This is an everyday thing. Even when somebody call you, you don't sometimes want to talk to them, but sometimes you got to pick up the phone because you don't know if it's an emergency. Then some folk call you just to be what? No. I didn't come all the way from Roxburgh and Durham to, 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 to try to dress up some stuff. But, but, but I come to, to let you know that Abram there's going through to be a time that sometimes you got to know how to part ways from some folk. Now, when they talk about your pastor and, and, he, and they talking about him in Durham, I got to stand up. Help me, somebody. Because sometimes people always say, what I heard, you won't dare. But child, I heard it. No, you won't. You won't dare. I seen him here and there. You won't see him. There. If you was here and there, why won't you praying for him? Too many believers get caught up what I heard. And ain't heard nothing. You need to hear the voice of the Lord. And I want to tell you, my brother and sister, I learned, I live long enough to know sometime when you go down your knees, the devil will go down on your knees with you. To try to rise you back up before time. But I'm so glad that I serve a God who's a refuge in a time of trouble. Oh, I wish I had a witness here. Every now and then, when you go down your knees, I remember what the old folks said. Father, I stretch my hand to thee with no other help from you. If you would draw yourself from me, oh, where shall I go? You got to part ways from some folk. I'm going to get a little dangerous here. I might get ran out of here what I'm getting ready to say. But I want to tell you, sometimes you got to part way from kinfolk. And kinfolk get, is the first folk to be jealous of what God had done for you. How you know, Glenn, I got some in my family, and all of us got some jealous family members in our family. If we just be honest with one another, we got to let the Lord fix it. And he will fix it after a while. The ways with some stuff in our lives. I live long enough to come to the church. And I must be honest, I ain't been in church all my life. It's still some junk in my trunk that the Lord need to clean up. Can I call up a witness? David said, create me a clean heart and renew a right spirit that was in me. Help me somebody. So God said, Abram, to where it, I'm taking you to, I can take you through. 
And I have discovered God ain't going to put no more than you can bear. Help me somebody. I, I'm taking you, you through this, Abram, because some spots along the way, it looks good. And sometimes that's what the enemy want to throw at us. We want to send us the good stuff that looks good, but it's not pleasing to God. Help me somebody. I, I come by, I, I just come by to tell you the way that it looks good ain't good. Because sometimes God needs to have an anointing on your life. And you see, God is anointing Abram for a purpose. And anoint him means, Abram, you got to separate from the buddies. I'm so glad that I come to discover I separated myself. But I come to discover what Paul had declared in Romans 8 and 31. He said, if God be for us, who could be against us? I wish I had a witness. Because there are some folk you need to get away from. Do I have a witness? Always keeping mess and junk. Trying to steal your joy. But I come by to tell you the joy I have. The world didn't give it to me. And the world ain't going to take it away. This joy I have comes from a father who sits high and look low. I heard Proverbs 18 and 21 tell us that death and life are in the power of the tongue. Y'all sit down. Y'all making me nervous. I want to tell you this morning that this little thing in our mouth have destroyed a lot of folk. We have tell lies in this little tongue. Some things we said we can't take back. But I'm so glad I got a God who will forgive me of my sin. We all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. I'm glad I got mercy and I got grace. Can I preach it now? And those who love, it would be the first one to eat the fruit of the barren tree. But Abram does not make it his problem because he decided I'm going to follow God's agenda I don't care how many listeners I have. If I got God's agenda, I got love on the agenda. I got joy on the agenda. I got peace on the agenda. I got happiness on the agenda. I'm glad I learned to know he jumps on my agenda. Because if I got God first on my agenda, I don't care how many of devils in hell come up against us. We got God on our agenda. I feel the spirit moving in the place because God speaks with the ears of faith. Come here, Paul. For we walk by faith and not by sight. For faith cometh by the word of God. I'm glad that Abram realized he learned how to listen to the voice of God. A lot of church folk always mumbling and complaining because they do not Listen to what the Spirit of the Lord has to say. I'm going to listen for what God has for me. I'm glad I learned how to listen. Abraham learned how to figure out his assignment. I got to stop for a moment because all of us, Got an assignment that God has granted us. You see, I can't sing, but I can bow my head 
I might gain shout, but I can make a joyful noise unto the Lord. God is on this journey. Can I say this, Pastor? Don't worry about November 5th because God already got it fixed. Everything is in his hand. It don't matter who go to the White House because I discovered he would never leave us alone. I'm glad I've been blessed. I'm glad that the Lord makes a way somehow. Can I preach it the way I feel it? Anybody else? Have you been blessed? Anybody else? Has he put joy in your soul? You see, God has an invitation. Whosoever will, let him come. I heard the Bible says, I was glad when they said, let me come into the house of God. I'm on this journey. Abram, you're on the journey. God's goal is to bring Abram to his knees. But the point is that I will bless all nations. I will bless Lee Springs. I will bless Zion Level. I will bless my people who are called by my name. I will bless everybody on the sun or my name. Anybody here, have you been blessed by the power of the Holy Ghost? Are they all right? Can you say yeah for the Father, for the Son? I'm glad I got the clothes, but I want to tell you I've been blessed by the power. He walks with me. He talks with me. And the joy that I share, no other help I know. I'm glad he walks, he runs, he talks with me. And he all right. Can you say yeah? Yeah, yeah. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Lord. Somebody here need a miracle worked out in your life. Well, I got some good news. God is on his way back looking for a church without a spot or wrinkle. Ain't he all right? Ain't he all right? Have you tried him? Have you trusted him? Have you believed in him? He's all right. Have you been blessed? He blesses us every day. He blesses us every moment. Every second. He's blessing us. Right now. Oh, I feel like it. I've been blessed. You've been blessed. We ought to give God some praise. For what he has. What he's planning to do. Yes. 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 When I come to the house of God, I don't come looking for what nobody else is doing. I come to tell the Lord, thank you. I come to tell the Lord, thank you for one more day. That's something. The 
child of God. Abel was on his journey. The text tells us also why the Holy Spirit sometimes you don't get to the end. Pastor Hurst might pick it up next week. He said, curse thee that curse you. Bless thee that blesses you. I like the last of the C clause for my theologians in here. If he blesses me, why he can't bless you? And see, if he blesses you, why you can't bless him? And since I'm down on the eastern part of North Carolina, I'm already been blessed by just getting here. And I believe that when I leave here and exit out of here, I'm going to be blessed getting back to Durham. Do I have a witness? I want to minister to somebody because sometimes we always looking for the shout and the hoop at the end of the message. But I just want to stop for a moment for about a minute and a half that if anybody in here been blessed by God, you ought to stand on your feet and give God the highest praise that you never gave God before. come to the house of God, we get so silent like ain't nobody done nothing to us. But I got somebody who done something for you. And you sometimes just got to get out of yourself. Don't worry about these clothes you got on. You ought to just thank God that you can come and praise the Lord. I'll praise him every day. I'm from at Harris Teeter at the grocery store, at the gas station. I just want to thank the Lord. Because it could have been the other way. But I'm going to praise him. I'm going to thank him. I'm going to magnify him. Oh, let us magnify the Lord and see how good he's been to us. He's been good to us. Then we've been to ourselves. I just want to help somebody. If God done anything for you, if God blesses you, just bless somebody else along this pilgrim wage. Then your work won't go in vain. I've been blessed. I say I've been blessed. Least brain, you've been blessed. Do I got a witness in this house? Have you been blessed? Show some sign. Show some evidence that the Lord, Lord, Lord has been good. He been good on a Monday morning, on a Tuesday night, on a Wednesday evening, on a Thursday morning. On a Friday afternoon, on a Saturday morning, he's been good. He's been good. Bless him. Bless him. I got to quit this thing. Bless him. Let me tell you. 
God will bless you when it seems like there's no way. You ever had to have a bill paid? And you went in your bedroom in your closet? And that garment you thought you need to take to the dry cleaner. And you looked down in it. And there was a few dollars in there. To help you pay that bill. You can't tell me we don't serve our own time God. I've been there before. I've been in situations we're so tight. You know, he a pastor. He got all this guy. We got problems too. See, when I go to the gas station, ain't no gas station just for preachers. When I go to the grocery store, there ain't no line just for preachers. I got to pay the same thing everybody else pays. But I got smart, though. I wait the Thursday to go to the store now. I had another birthday. So I cried. The lady said, you look like you, are, you get the same citizen discount. I said, thank you, Jesus. She said, well, you didn't come last week. She said, well, you know, I shouldn't do this. She said, but it's you. I want to bless you. She said, well, go on and get something else. This is a true story. Go get something else. She said, I want to take an extra $30 off your bill. You can't tell me what God won't do. I'm through. God bless each and every one of you in here. Thank you for your prayers. Thank you for your worship experience. I'm going to ask this choir to give us a song. We're going to open up the doors of the church. I have one here today. I want to come as a candidate baptism, Christian experience of by letter. The Bible says, whosoever will, let him come. Don't come looking because somebody else is looking at you. I discovered a long time ago, if you make one step for the Lord, he'll make two for you. He will save you. You're not only coming to give your hand to the preacher, but you come to build a relationship with God. Because when the preacher is not around, you got God everywhere. He's all around. He's around the world. I see what God can do. Then after they sing, those that desire to come to the altar, we're going to have prayer. Because prayer changes things. And prayer changes situations. And I got one better than that. Prayer works. If you desire to come to the altar, we're going to invite you to come right now, wherever you at. God can do it. 
I feel much better when you lay your burdens down. Cast all your cares upon him because he cared for you. Oh, yes, he'll do it for you. The first thing I want to do, I want to pray for this pastor, Pastor Hurst. I want to pray for the other minister here. I want to pray for everyone here that's standing in front of me, those that are in your pew. And I want to pray for that situation in Georgia. That young man took the lives. That place is about 40 miles north of Atlanta. Very familiar with that. I'm praying for the young people here in Hope County. These school systems across the state of North Carolina. And I just want to let you know, my brothers and sisters, if you just give it to God, he might don't come right now. But he's an on-time God. Let with every head bowed and every eye closed. Our Father and our God, as we come now with bowed heads and our hearts, we come first to say thank you for what our eyes have seen and our ears have heard. We pray right now, our dear Heavenly Father, that you would touch the pastor of this church, that you would touch Pastor Bruce Hirsch right now, from the head to the sole of his feet. I ask you, Lord, that you touch the other minister that is up here. Bless the leadership team of Leak Spring Missionary Baptist Church. We ask you, Lord, that you bless each one that came around this altar. Because, God, we know that you are still able to answer our prayers. We're praying right now for, Lord, the tragedy in the state of Georgia. God, we ask you, Lord, that you would touch those families that have lost loved ones. But God, we know that you're able to send a comforter by. We pray in our dear Heavenly Father, Lord, that you would bless Hope County School System right now. Bless the teachers, Lord. Bless the principals. Bless each student, Lord. Bless all the workers, the bus drivers, the cafeteria workers, Lord. God, we don't never know where the enemy might be laying. But God, we ask you, Lord, that you would protect them and guide them. I'm praying right now, oh God, for this nation. Praying for this entire world. We ask you, Lord, that you bless our congregation in Roxburgh, Zion Level Missionary Baptist Church. That you would bless each member of that congregation right now in the name of Jesus. We got some God that's in the hospital in Durham, North Carolina. I ask you, Lord, that you would touch Pastor and Miss Walls from the New Calvary Church in Durham. God, Lord, that you would heal their body, Lord, and let them know, God, that you're able. God, there might be some on this sick list here at Leak Spring, God. Go by and touch them in a special way. And Father, we want to say thank you, God, for all the things you have done for us. And then we want to thank you for what you plan to do for us. God, help us to have another joyful day, another joyful week, if it's your will. And Lord, we ask you, Lord, that you would touch and be with us. Now to him that is able to keep us from falling, if man should die, man should speak again. With the sweet communion of the Holy Spirit, rest through by hands and forevermore. Let us all say together, amen. 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 Be blessed and have a blessed week.
on next Saturday morning, it's coming Saturday morning, we're asking the deacons and all the social ministers to meet with me here in sanctuary at 9 o'clock on Saturday morning. All the social ministers and all deacons will meet here Saturday morning at, at 9 o'clock. Amen? Amen. And I want to say, too, this evening uh, the First Baptist at 3 o'clock, Stephanie and my wife will be preaching for their missionary program. Someone backed out and, and Brother Manor uh, called me and said he needed help. So if you're able, uh, come and be with us at First Baptist at 3 o'clock this evening. Because he's a son of the church. Amen. Amen. We should be preaching there today at 3. Again, Felicia and Darren, we thank you so much for visiting us. All visitors, we thank you so much. Brother, so glad to have you. Classmate, God bless you. So glad to have you. And all of you who've come to worship, come up, come again, and come to uh, come again and be with us. And we'll continue to pray for you. Let's remember those persons on our sick list: Brother Ernest Perry, uh, Sister Sister McGeady, uh, Deacon Robert Singletary. So good to see Mother Catherine I'm back here today. Reverend Peterkin, God bless you. God bless you, and Mark Shirley, God bless you. The Lord is a healer. He is a healer. Amen. May we all stand. That we all stand. Now, God, for these moments of worship, we're so thankful. And thank you for the preacher for reminding us that we are so blessed. And I pray now that you dispatch angels of mercy all around him and grant him traveling mercy all the way back to Durham, North Carolina. And now may the grace of God and the sweet communion of his Holy Spirit rest down and abide with each and every one of us, henceforth, now, and forevermore. And the people of God said, Amen. Amen. Amen.